What's up guys? Today I'm going to teach you how to change out a valve cover gasket on a 2010 Infiniti FX35. There's not that much videos for it. It's similar to a 350Z and more. We got the parts right here. I'm going to go change them out. Let's go. All right, so I had a hard time trying to find out how to do this because all the same similar cars or all the videos up online, there isn't any about this car, you know, but the closest thing I saw to it is going to be a 350Z. Um, very similar, same kind of style as Infiniti, but it's the same kind of like Nissan engine kind of deal. Uh, well, the first thing we're going to do is actually remove all of this and then it's going to be these hose this uh, intake box and all these other stuff and then there's a lot of hoses and all this stuff that you gotta take out but uh i'll try to show you in detail this video might be long it might not be it might be fast forwarded but uh yeah let's start off with this this one you just need to pry open with a like a flathead screwdriver and then these are 10 millimeters start by untaking that out so if you're a short guy like me uh you're kind of gonna need an extension and all that but you can go ahead and just remove all of this you don't need to see that. This one you can just pry open. So. All right, so like I said, I'm not into this car. I don't like this car. It's a lot of, a lot to do just to change the, you know, the gaskets for the valve cover. So we took out that little flat, fancy plastic cover, this intake uh, air box. We're gonna now remove the intake boots as well as the air boxes. All right, so now you wanna take out your battery because you're gonna remove all this air boxes and air, air, air hoses and stuff, but it does have connectors. And you know me, anything that deals with electricity and stuff, you wanna not fuck that up because the wiring will get all fucked up and you don't wanna do that. So yeah, we're gonna start off by unplugging that. And then I already did it. Uh, you take out these bolts and then of course the clamps from this so you, and also this, you gotta take it out. Cause uh, what you do on this side, you're gonna have to kind of vice versa, it's symmetrical. You're gonna do it on the other side. Uh, this whole thing right here, is gonna come out you know what i mean and then we'll move on to the middle then there's gonna be three bolts that you're gonna remove air box air box and that one all the way over there there's gonna be one there oh. unclamp the hoses and then we'll pull it out oh there's also gonna be 12 millimeter bolts So you saw me take out those, those screws right there, and as well as the wires. There's also, it's clipped here. We gotta remove that. Clip there, we gotta remove that. And then also one special screw here. We gotta remove that. Because when this comes out, like that, you see, it's held onto this part right here. We're gonna have to remove that whole thing. And then, you know, same thing goes with that side. These, uh, you could just unscrew them or, you know, uh, get a socket, drill it, uh, uns uh, yeah, drill it out, unscrew it. And then, like I said, we're gonna have to remove this hose, these clamps, so this would come loose. This whole thing will come out. Okay, let's go do that. Fast forward. Because I need all the space I can, you can kind of see the valve cover here. We took out one of the intake hoses. Again, uh, we're gonna have to do that on the other side. Uh, and then we'll work on the middle. All right, as you can see, I didn't really take it out, but I had some wiggle room to remove the hose. But yeah, so I removed the intake hose. Remember there's a special screw here and I took out the three there as well as the clamped, uh, unclamped these hoses because they have electrical wires. You don't want to crack that or, you know, break it. Also, I took out the battery. So we have that exposed now. We're going to unscrew these. These four bolts uh, are size 12 millimeter. We'll do that again, fast forward. We're gonna remove all the hoses from the intake body, uh, throttle body, uh, coolant and manifold. We're just gonna take out all the hoses that are connected and then we can move, remove this, uh, the 12 millimeter bolts. There should be about six, uh, four, I'm not sure, but maybe six over there. So I uh, gotta remove all the hoses. 
gotta remove all of the hoses hold down this intake manifold otherwise it won't lift out but when you do feel like you took you took out all the hoses and you unscrewed it and stuff lift it up but you lift it up slowly because you don't know which wire or hose is actually connected to it so just remove all of that still some connectors that i'm removing from the throttle remove body remove all of that it's gonna be a, pro a process but uh, again just remove all of the hoses that hold down the intake manifold and then the bolt. So uh, again, there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, about six of this uh, bolts and then two that hold the intake manifold down. There's one that's hidden here, uh, right there. I don't think you can see it. Be careful not to lose that again. Try to loosen up all the wires that will hold. But a uh, great tip is when you do take out these, uh, screws right it'll come a little loose and that way as you lift you can kind of see what wires what hoses what coolant hoses that are attached to your uh, intake are holding it down so uh best tip is to do it lightly and kind of observe where is it like snagging on because you want to take this out this is such a hassle but uh yeah i guess this is how it is for fx 35 2010 infinity I'm not sure if this is the hardest part, but yeah, again, uh, we took out this screw right here in the back and we took out the other one. So again, we have two of these. And then of course we have the one, two, three, four, five, six long, uh, probably like four inch bolts down. So you can kind of see it moving. So as you do that, you can also see which is gonna snag, which lines will hold your intake manifold down and intake so your throttle body so yeah you can go ahead and do your all your own observation and try to take out your own hoses uh some some hoses are coolant hoses so when you when you plug it or take it out it might uh leak some coolant just try your best uh not to get it all over the workplace but yeah we'll go remove these all right in the back side i'm going to remove this connector um that's for your evap line uh, you can see also this one and that one I gotta uh, remove. I think this one might be a coolant line. So when you do take it out, you will have some leak of coolant. As well as this one, when you remove that, you're gonna have some coolant leak. Uh, all in all, just for you to remove this intake manifold. It's bolts that we removed. And uh, I'll show you how I kind of lift it. And you can kind of see like uh, how it is, but that's the intake manifold. But yeah, you see the wires and more. When I try to lift it, you can see which is snagging and holding it down. So it looks like over there. This one down here, yeah, there's a coolant line as well as the back one right here. And then uh, there's one that connects and goes all the way around, which is this right here. I'm trying to get that one loose. And then hopefully, when I lift up, we'll see which is grabbing again and or uh, snagging. These I don't think I'm gonna take out because they're com combined, but we'll see what happens. But I also see this line right here. It's connected to it. I'm not sure if we're gonna loosen that one. So we'll see if it snags. So that's the thing with this. When you do take out the bolts, you lifting it, you could kind of see where it's restricted or getting pulled down. Uh, those might be the wires holding you down after you take out the bolts. All right, so I removed this wire as well as that evap hose, that connector right there, and in the back, this one right here, and that one. Hopefully, uh, that's all that I removed for the wires and coolant hoses that hold it down on the intake manifold. We're gonna try to lift this up now, see if it comes loose. Get to the side because there's one more hose that seems like it's the one that's holding us down. So we're gonna try to get that loose. Pull them together. I'm just gonna remove this bottom one right here. It's uh, in there. But I'm gonna remove that so it can pull up because that's the one that's snagging and holding this intake manifold down. Of course, very tight spaces. I can't really show you uh, all that. So yeah, uh, at least I told you what to do and how to remove or where to remove all the hoses and the bolts for now. All right, so we removed it. It's a coolant line. Uh, sorry if you can't see it really right, but so we removed it. 
uh, that should be that's the rest that's holding us down so we could probably take out the intake manifold now all right hopefully that is it that holds this intake manifold down and yes it is. as you can see we removed the intake manifold all right uh one two three four uh of course five uh hoses uh also coolant hoses that we have to remove but again we're going to have to remove all of this because the valve cover for this fx35 is right here you got two and of course the bad boy right there we gotta close that up we don't want any debris going in there put like a towel and rag and then yeah we're gonna have to take out all the wiring Whew. it's hard because this car is pretty much lifted and i'm on stools chairs to get in there but let me show you what was pretty hard so again you got a connector you got the intake hoses uh you got this evap line also you got another connector uh one more here and one more here and of course that coolant line right here and another connector and the intake as well as the two screws and then one two three four five six bolts and then that one screw in the beginning that we took out just to take out the intake manifold of this infinity 2010 fx35 uh, now we can begin uh taking out this wiring harness uh, and more so uh i think i'm gonna start off by yeah just trying to get as much space as we can clear out the harnesses i'm also going to try to tape the coolant line or uh whatevs all right uh again another hard part uh just re remove all of the the wirings the rear cam position sensors uh yeah you're just remove all the connectors uh why don't you do all this oh, even the clips when you do all this you want it as free as you can be because you're going to remove next up after you remove every wire uh and the connectors you're going to remove um the valve cover so i don't i don't see videos of x fx 35s uh infinity 2010 models out there in youtube it's always going to deal with like a 350z or like a uh another model of infinity or a nissan but it's you know it's same family kind of uh it's very similar uh to be honest with you i don't like this i hate it but again i'm gonna show you i'm gonna do it I'll fast forward this because I got to go and hunt, take out all the clips and I'll tell you what clips I took off for the wiring harnesses and more. And of course, the sensor that I unplug so you can do it to yourself and also, you know, reference because we're going to do everything in reverse again when we're finished with this job. So uh, to make it easier, I just unloosed all of the things that hold it down so I can easily pop it all out so I can take out the wiring harness. I removed one and two connectors over there just because I got to get more uh, wiggle, wiggle room to get those clips loose. All right, so I removed this clip as well as unplug these as well as remove this clip right here and as well as remove these connectors. Um, so I'm getting more room and play time. I gotta remove more clips and remove this wiring harnesses just so, you know, the access for the valve cover is easy. Again, that's a big help covering those holes. Uh, yeah. Okay, uh, I removed this 10 millimeter bolt uh, over there. It's uh, this thing that holds this wiring harness down. So I removed this family of bolt one and all these other connectors. I'll let you know what else I remove and unclip as I go along. I removed this 12 millimeter bolt from uh, that just to get more space for when we're gonna take out this side. Unplug this connector. All right, so before I take out all these connectors, it's easy to get mixed up. Uh, the best bet is to label them, tape them, put put an indicator like uh, one because this is the coil pack order is going to be one, two, three, four, 
five, and six. So one, three, five. One, three, five, two, four, six would be the ma uh, order of these coil packs. Uh, but I'm gonna, of course, uh, label them. Probably put like a little note, like one, uh, yeah, one, three, five, and then two, four, six on them, as well as these uh, wirings, so we don't get mixed up later on. So before I take that out, I'm gonna take a little pen marker, little right dabs. You should do it too, so you don't get mixed up when you, you plug it in. You might get a misfire. So uh, yeah, label those. Okay, so yeah, you can kind of see it, like two, we put one on this one. Uh, so one, two, three, four, five, six of this uh, coil packs that we're gonna unhook and clip, unclip. Uh, this one clip is all the way from the back there. Um, yeah, uh, we're gonna start undoing those. But just a tip so you guys uh, don't get them mixed up later when we're gonna reinstall them. This is not an easy job. It's a lot of removal of wirings. Uh, yeah, so now we're gonna do the chassis ground. Uh, we're gonna remove these four ones just so that we can move this to the side. Uh, when you do remove all of these, uh, this wiring harness, uh, later on, you can uh, actually just hang it up on this uh, so you get it out of the way. So your your your, your right side, because you're looking at the car this way, your right side, you can get, get that out of the way and then you can work on the left side, removing these uh, cli more clips, more wiring harnesses, and then this chassis ground, uh, four wires, you gotta move them. So that way you could do these uh, this hose that connects to both of the valve covers. Uh, if you remove one, it should be easier later on to remove it. And then, yeah, you do all the, the last of the wirings. Just so you can take out the valve cover. The valve covers. There's two of them. Again, uh, I don't like this job, but we're going to do it. And uh, you're joining me along for this ride. Uh, there is a lot of clips that you gotta unhook. There is a lot of connectors you gotta unhook. There's a lot of wiring harnesses that are just wiring. You just you just gotta remove all those. And the crazy part is, again, you should label them because also you might forget where they go. And also, if you don't want to forget, you could videotape yourself, video video record yourself, just so the fact that later on when you have to reinstall them, you don't forget because that's gonna give you a code misfire or or what you know might not even start up. So yeah, uh, one of the hardest part is actually moving just everything and then just to change out that one, those two seals. Uh, so uh, yeah, let's go. Okay, so again, I'm removing all of these uh, coil packs not yet but the wiring the connectors uh one two there's a two connectors on this one three down there and then there's one back there you gotta remove it's also connected to the valve cover so heads up gotta move that again we're doing one side at a time taking care of this first and then we're gonna do the other side all right remove these two from the chassis uh ground right there we removed this bolt again from the chassis. There's gonna be another one that we're gonna move. Uh, it's down there. Just so we can get this wire uh, more free, if you can see it. And then it'll be easy to just, uh, you know, unwire it and hang it over there. So, uh, we're almost there. We almost, we're almost freed up from the, the wires that we unclipped. I'm gonna try to take this out just so I can, you know, kind of more transfer it over. But again, we really do need to take out all these wires, unclip them, so we have access for this uh, valve cover. All right, so I try to move the the wiring harness without removing this uh, air box. But uh, uh, yeah, so I guess uh, for more space, you do gotta re remove it. You're just gonna remove that one bolt that holds it down, and then you just gotta pull up and it should come out. Be careful because your math sensor is right there. Uh, don't break that. And yeah, uh, we're gonna have to remove this. I'm hoping it's just uh, it's on this connector. Yeah, it's just on this connector for the, what else is it on? I'm not sure what else is it on, but shit. Uh, we have more space now. 
and take it out. Also, you can see I labeled my coil packs. Yeah. Again, so we removed the other air box. We got these clips loose because this is just the crazy, I fucking hate this wiring harness for this FX35. We also got some of this uh, chassis uh, ground loose and the bracket all the way over here. And I think it's good enough for me to unscrew and take out the valve cover. But first, again, we're gonna do the coils. That's also a 10 millimeter. We're gonna unscrew those, take it out. And it's labeled, it's numbered. I'm gonna do the same to the other side and then I'm gonna take it out, put it to the side. All right, so we got loose all of the bolts that hold down the valve cover, which is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then of course we got the POS in the back, the cam POSs, uh, we gotta remove those. And you know, here and two more. We'll remove that and then we're gonna, un uh, we're gonna take out, pry open the valve cover, just like pop it open. All right, so we got all the bolts removed again, like I said, now we're gonna remove this, and then we should pry open this valve cover. <clears throat> All right, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Bolts hold the valve cover on the left side and two, hold the uh, cam POS uh, sensors on that side. Be careful not to make any debris or all that. Go inside. Like thus, we'll clean this out too. Uh, this is also a good time to like Check out the sealants. Scrape off the excess residue of those sealants. Like excess, like this. We're gonna have to kind of scrape that off and uh, get it out so we can put new RTV. All right, so you can take a razor blade. Uh, be sure to cover it up, like I said. New seal, Beck and Arnley. Uh, made in Japan, 0361754. This is for the right-hand side. When you're looking at the car, right-hand side would be your passenger. Left-hand side would be your uh, driver. So go, roll one. Pretty stiff. Above cover, you can see there is some uh, RTV that was used. We're gonna kind of scrape this off uh, so we can put a uh, new RTV. This little part right here, uh, you're gonna have a hard time unscrewing that or breaking it loose but uh your best recommendation is take out the pos right here these cam pos uh right when you pull it out you have a little more access to that bolt as well as the two other bolts here this screw right here near the six uh coil just because it was hard even if you have an extender it's kind of hard uh like to get in there this one. Uh, I think this is yeah coolant hose it's gonna be a problem for you but yeah don't jump the gun and do one side do it both at the same time but when I take this out what we're gonna do is kind of give it a good good clean you know like wash it down uh, hit it with some carb uh, bottle body bottle body throttle body cleaner and yeah and then we'll put the sealant and then kind of let it dry a little bit and then put it in because we don't want that uh, when we do put it in, we don't mind moving around. It's gonna be hard, hard to put back in. But I can see like uh, this, there is a tightening spec, a sequence. You're gonna do that cross thing, but we're gonna have to tighten, torque it by spec, so that way it's in the right 
uh, tightness, you know. So yeah, hardest part is that little niche over there. And yeah, there we go. <sighs> Okay, you can even see the seal, it's not even sticking on. It's already like coming off. It's time to re replace that one. I'm kind of cleaning it off. I'm hitting it with a car cleaner. And then wash it down. Or carb carburetor cleaner, choke cleaner, parts cleaner. I'm gonna spray it and I'm gonna rub down the parts where the seal will reach on the valve cover just to clean it off and you know, clean it a little excess off of the, the engine because uh you know the, all the oil leaks and all that stuff the valve cover back on it's like really nice and snug and also remember those parts where it has the ref leftover residue of uh what do you call that of um rtv try to clean that out also also while you're here you could kind of clean out the intake manifold area where it's going to connect you know clean it off and all that stuff but yeah we got the jb weld red silicone high temp rtv over here uh what they like to do is put it on all the curves or the galleys of uh the valve cover you know and when you do that some people also like to put the whole thing like a very little dab throughout and follow whatever curves or you know whatever turns there is they like to put there because that's where the seal kind of comes apart but yeah, so these are the old seals. I got the new seals over there. I'm gonna do that. And then uh, we're gonna dry it off and then put a little more on the corners and when we do install it back onto the engine. Also, like I said, uh, even on this Cam POS, uh, get, uh, what's that called, seal, you kinda wanna put a little, just so it holds in better when you do apply that on. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'll just fast forward it, show you how it is. Okay, so the grommets around this is still good. You know, I don't need to replace that. I don't need to whatever. Uh, I checked it. But uh, we're not going to put the whole thing, you know, put a crazy gasket uh, RTV all over because that's not what the gasket's for. We're just going to put it on the corners and kind of like on the part that meets another like metal to metal or like a weird shape, which is pretty much the part where it hits that part in the engine. So, uh, yeah. Uh, check me out. I'm going to put it on. Uh, I'm put it very sparingly, you know, not too crazy, not too crazy, you know, just like, you know, little dabs. So, yeah, that's how it's going to be. All right, so when you do put gaskets, you don't want to like push it because it'll go out of place. You just want to keep tapping it, tap your thumb down on it and make it kind of sink. Uh, I put some where I felt like it would come loose at the ends. So I put some uh, RTV there. So if you could, if you saw the video of me fast forwarding, I'm putting RTV. I'm also going to put more RTV on the part that feels like it'll come loose when I'm installing the thing. So it kind of sticks a little better. And also if there's a gap, at least uh, the RTV kind of has that little seal maker and it kind of has it like stuck together and it's strong. So yeah, we're, do we're good with this. We're going to go put it in after we put it, uh, put the other seal on the the right hand uh, valve cover. All right, uh, I don't know if most people do it, but it actually takes one hour to kind of harden. Uh, so the, the instructions are actually when you do put that on you kind of leave it be for an hour So it gets hard so, and then you can put it on and tighten it But we're gonna give it a like, like maybe like, let it bake for a bit and then we'll put it back in and then we'll hand tighten it And I'll show you the tightening specs and how we're gonna tighten it <sighs> Again, I thank you for watching this video. I know it's kind of crazy I know I didn't film like really in-depth for all of you, but I hope you understand uh, Yeah, the problem of this is actually just taking all the wire, wire harnesses and then yeah like 
um, just pretty much that intake manifold. Uh, that's the kind of the hardest part. After that, it's just that one screw that I tell you about over here. It's probably gonna be the hardest part to screw in, but we're always gonna hand tighten things first because we don't wanna drill out anything. But yeah, so if you're doing this job, don't forget to put away all those screws uh, and also like film and take pictures of where they go and where they belong because there's a lot of screws, man. Uh, yeah, even putting back the intake manifold, there is still a lot of screws and also putting back the clips and also the connectors for your, you know, your everything for your sensors, for your brake and all that stuff, even for the, the coolant lines. Uh, don't forget to plug that in because, you know, you might get a misfire or something when you do. Uh, yeah, so we're just getting that a little dry. We clean down the intake manifold where the surface is going to touch as well as the, the valve covers as well as those so we're just gonna do that we're gonna put it in now i'll show you how that looks i know a lot of these clips are fast forwarded but i hope you'll kind of get the grasp of how to do it yeah so let's go hopefully the seal didn't go crazy and shift out of place when we're putting it in that's why some people wait for like a solid hour or one day for it to really dry but there you go we kind of waited for like 30 minutes for it to get, to get on dry. So yeah, well now it's on, we're going to put back the screws of how we took it out. Everything that we did, we're going to do it in reverse and, you know, do it back. So we're going to start by putting in the screws. Hand tighten everything first, and then I'll tell you how you're going to like tighten it cross panel wise and all that stuff and the right torque spec. Also the reason for hand tightening instead of just putting it in socket, you don't want to uh, strip this. It's going to be the craziest thing in the world if you strip this, but it's always good to hand tighten something. That way, you know you don't like cross thread it. All right, so we lightly hand tighten it. It's not tight at all, but we're going to tighten it the right way. Uh, I'll show you how to do that. We're just going to tighten it uh, till it grounds out, and then later on we'll do the torque. So it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. Uh, let me repeat that. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. I'll put the picture if my hand's too confusing, but again, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right, so you saw me do all that and I put the last one right here. So 11, 12, and as well as the cam uh, POS, I'm putting it back just so you know. I'm gonna get the torque wrench and I'll tighten it down. All right, so we got a torque wrench. Uh, what I found online is it's gonna be five to six foot pounds. So I don't know if you can see it. I'm on six foot pounds, uh, right there, six foot pounds. I'm gonna tighten it down, uh, same order. The, the one I showed you, the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Yeah, you, you know, I'll just show you, fast forward it again. And yeah, let's get it. Okay, so tightening sequence for this, it's gonna be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. That's how you tighten it in that order. All right, so now that we tighten it to spec six uh, foot pounds on each bolt, uh, next up, we're gonna go put the spark plug coils back again see uh lucky we labeled it lucky we labeled it by its number and we're gonna put it back again it's one two three four five six 
Also, that should be the way we put it back, put it in as well. Now we're just gonna tighten that, and we should be good to put everything back. All right, so you saw me put back the spark plug coils, and also uh, we're gonna plug everything back. Lucky we also labeled our the wires, spark plug wires, and more. So your best bet now is just to put everything back. I don't think I need to show you guys that. The way you guys took it out is the way you're gonna put it back. I kept telling you about uh, recording and all that stuff, so do that. Uh, check back on what you took out and uh, what you unplugged. So now you can do it in reverse and then put everything back. Uh, so after you put everything back, all the wires, then you're gonna put back the intake manifold. So I'll see you then. Okay, so as you can see, we got all our connectors and the stuff that we got loose and the brackets on. These are gonna be for the air filter box and the intake hose. So it should be two like this. And then don't forget to put this uh, hose in and then tighten your, uh, your uh, negative things to the chassis. Okay, now we're gonna input the two air boxes. All right, so now for the hard part, and it's also the first thing that was the hard part, putting back the intake and manifold. We're gonna put that in, be careful not to put it in the debris in, and then just plug in all those holes that they took out and connectors, and then we'll put the hose, uh, intake holes on last. So we finally put back the intake manifold. We connected the intake hoses, as well as the other hoses that connect each the intakes together. We put the connectors in. Uh, we, we put that EVAP line back where it's supposed to be, that EVAP line right there, as well as this line right here. Uh, you can't really see it, but there's a line here that we put back. We put everything back to where it was. Now we got these two bolts. Also, there's that wire that we, we did in the back as a coolant line. We put that back now over here. We connected all of these lines and the hoses. We just got to secure it later, you know? And that, there's another line here that goes to the coolant line. We connected that, don't forget that. Now these two bolts, we're gonna go put it over there where it's supposed to go. And then we're gonna put the six uh, long screws in So everything's screwed in we're putting back this uh, intake connector After I put all these things I'm gonna put that fancy cover and we're gonna start it up All right, be sure to have everything plugged in uh, Batteries up uh, and running again, and then what we're gonna do is uh, start it up and see if anything's acting up or weird. And then also you can watch if there's any leaks, if you forgot to plug up the coolant lines or whatever. And then, yeah, see if you did a good job, if it starts smoking or if some crazy codes come up or if like your dashboard gets crazy. Don't forget to uh, you know check it out and observe it. So we're gonna on it, start it for a bit. Uh, watch the, the RPM, see if it like levels out below, uh, uh, what's that called? 1000 RPMs. So we'll check it. Let's go. All right. RPMs is good right there. There's no uh, lights besides this uh, tire, tire lights and me putting a seatbelt. Uh, it's not shaking. It's not like having a rough idle. 
it's looking good also uh i did check already uh before i filmed this so yeah i know that none of the things in the engine is leaking and i checked uh triple checked actually all the lines if they're plugged in so yeah uh kind of crazy video so yeah it's kind of a crazy video uh it's a lot of fast forwarding but uh again the biggest challenge you're gonna have is those wires the wiring harnesses and removing all of the connectors and then also you know the bolts but i, I hope you saw that uh diagram of how to tighten it also um the foot pounds if you're going to torque it the, the valve cover is good also uh the little tip about tapping into the the valve covers instead of rubbing your thumb on the the seal i hope those things help you i hope this video kind of helped i don't see really much of a infinity 2010 fx35 videos about how to change out valve cover gaskets so i'm hoping this video helps you a lot and uh you kind of you kind of got the lowdown of what i did and uh, if anything, just keep commenting down below. I answer all comments, regardless if this video is old. If you need help with uh, how to, you know, do this. And also, like, um, yeah, valve cover. I'm going to do more uh, videos of this, this car, this model. Because uh, I'm going to try to fix it up. But, yeah, uh, I'm, my, my forte is actually Sportages, Kia Sportages. So, this one is kind of different. It's like a 350Z uh, motor, but it's on Infiniti. So, it's like a Nissan and Infiniti whatever but yeah thank you for watching subscribe if you haven't uh have other videos like car videos and besides car videos i have travel videos skateboarding videos and all that stuff uh good stuff this is my channel uh again uh help me out like this video uh if you can't find any other infinity fx 35 2010 hook your boy up share people share this video with people who needs it or you know save it for yourself in case you need to do a valve cover uh gasket uh replacement so yeah, my name is Mark. Catch you in the next one. Peace. I'm out.